In this lecture, we will create a new ASP.NET Web API using Visual Studio. For that, I have created a folder called NZVox, which is going to be the name of the project that we are creating. This project is about the walks and trails of New Zealand. So I have created a folder for myself and in this folder, I'm going to create my ASP.NET Core Web API. For that, I have opened Visual Studio and this is their starting page. From the starting page, you can click on this button that says create a new project. So click on that. It takes you to the next page, which is giving you a ton of templates to create a project from. On the left hand side, you can see the recently used project templates. You might be having none over here because you haven't created one. But if you look at the right hand side, you can use these filters to select the template that you want. I have my filter selected as C sharp, all platforms and web. And because we want to create an ASP.NET Core Web API from this list over here, I want to select this template. This is the template for ASP.NET Core Web APIs. It reads that it is a template for creating an ASP.NET Core application with an example controller for a RESTful HTTP service. This template can also be used for ASP.NET Core MVC views and controllers. But for our purpose, we are going to use this template to create RESTful HTTP APIs. So select this template and click on the next button. On this page, Visual Studio is asking us to configure our new project. From here, we can give the project name, the location and the solution name. So let's give the location first and I have the location with me. I want to create the API in this folder. So I will copy the location and paste it in the location tab. Now I want to give my project name and because we are creating a project API, I want to say this is the nzvox.api because that is the project that we are creating. And the solution name just takes the name from the project, but we want to give a different solution name. We want to remove the term API from it. So solution name becomes nzvox. The project name is nzvox.api because a solution can have multiple projects. So one of them will be an API and maybe in future you want to create a website for nzvox as well. So then you can create a project called nzvox.web. After making these changes, please click on the next button. From here, Visual Studio is asking us about additional information about the framework and the authentication type. In the framework top drop down, I can see different options like .NET 5, .NET 6, 7 and 8. These are the versions of .NET that I have installed on my machine. The versions over here could totally be different on your machine based on what you have installed. I am going to select .NET 8 over here because that is the latest version. As you can clearly see, .NET 5 is out of support, .NET 6, 7 and 8 are valid, but .NET 8 is the long term support version and is the latest version at the time of the recording of this video. If you, if you can't see .NET 8 over here, please go back to section 1 and download and install .NET 8 SDK and .NET 8 Runtime. And also, if you haven't installed Visual Studio from scratch, you have to update Visual Studio so that you can see .NET versions over here. I will select .NET 8 from the framework and after that I will keep selecting none as the authentication type because I will add authentication inside the application from scratch. After that, we will not use any of the, you know, not make any modifications and we will keep the defaults as is. Once that is done, please click the create button. The project has been created. In the next lecture, we will go through the files and folders that we get as part of the scaffolding process. are creating a builder and then we are injecting services to our builder object or inside this application. These services will then be later on used by the application 
and finally we build the builder object. Another important function of the program.cs file is to configure the HTTP request pipeline. By using the request pipeline, we add middleware, which is a software that assembled into an application pipeline to handle requests and responses. These are the middlewares that have been configured in our application by default. These are the HTTPS redirection, using authorization and mapping controllers as well. Finally, when we have configured the middleware, we then run our application. And then the controller is looking for an action trigger so that it can execute a piece of code.